and welcome to Model Kit Stuff and today's first impressions video is focusing on Ravel's 1 to 350 scale turpits. And once again I'm reviewing a kit that is just too big to go on the modelling bench, at least when it's in its box. So you'll have to bear with me, I will do my best to reduce the camera shake while we take a look at the box. So for those of you who might be um, less familiar with the, the Turpits than certainly uh, the Bismarck, uh, the Turpits is Bismarck's sister ship um, and was laid down under the German or the Nazi um, rearmament campaign in 1936 and wasn't actually launched until 1941. Um, she is named after Alfred von Tirpitz, who was the architect of the Imperial Navy, and is the um, largest, heaviest European capital ship built um, during the wartime years. She didn't particularly have an eventful wartime career. Um, I guess her, her biggest achievement was acting as a deterrent and um, forcing the British Royal Navy to uh, ensure it had um, ships on reserve so it, it tied up um, ships for the Royal Navy more than actually seeing much in the way of action and she was strategically placed as deterrents um, in, in Norway to, to help prevent any possible thoughts of invasion. There was intentions of um, commerce raiding but that became too risky. There was intentions of um, uh, attacking convoys to the Soviet Union and even a couple of attempts at it but they were um, you know I, it wasn't something she was particularly successful at and, and those operations weren't particularly successful in fact the only time she really used her guns in anger um, was um, on uh, when they bombarded Spitsbergen which uh, in 1943 some three years after the Royal Navy had leveled the place and uh, emptied everybody off, off, off Spitsbergen um, mining base. The other thing that the um, Tirpitz did was um, be a, a key target for the RAF. Um, while she was still afloat, she was still a threat, and so there were several um, air raids on the Tirpitz um, and um, attacks by um, mini submarines and, and that sort of thing uh, to try and um, knock her out of the war once and for all. Finally, um, capsizing after an uh, air attack um, using tall boy bombs from Lancaster bombers um, in late 1944. Um, and she was um, broken up and scrapped in the late 40s um, through to pretty much the late 50s. It took, a, it took them about eight years to scrap her. Anyway, uh, what we have here is um, a rather nice picture of her in a, a dazzling splinter camouflage in what looks to be a Norwegian fjord, um, surrounded by anti-torpedo nets. Actually, some of the camouflage that was put down on Tirpitz was very, very well done, and she was quite well hidden um, uh, against the coastline for, at times. We can see here that this is the Platinum Edition, and Ravel is saying this is a skill 5. Um, so we get Pontos Etch, Pontos um, Turned Brass, and Pontos uh, Laser um, Wood Overlay Decks. Um, you can see there that the scale is 1 to 350, 2,190 parts, well that includes all the photo etch. So I, I'd be surprised if it was much more than 500 plastic parts. Um, and she comes in at just over, or just under, I suppose, 72 centimetres. My maths teacher preferred me to round up than round down. We have some images of the model there, um, which looks nicely detailed. The box also lists the Ravel paints that you may want, and our kit number is 05160. So when we open the box, we can see why it's such a large box. Um, just because of the way they've laid it out, we've got about a third of the box just being taken up by two hull halves. 
which although very nicely packed to make sure they don't get any damage um, and same with the deck that's been nicely tied into the top to stop it moving around which is a nice touch it does make the box very large and quite in, an imposing box and, and I wonder if that's deliberately done to, to um, be an imposing gift maybe um, I would say that it's about a third bigger than a typical Tamiya ship kit box um, for example uh, anyway, um, it looks like we've got lots of detail there, so let's start and dig out the instructions. So paint instructions are on a separate sheet, and we've got here Battleship Tirpitz, um, Norway, July 42. Now this is quite an interesting scheme, because on one side of the ship we've got this black, grey and blue sprinter, splinter pattern. Um, all on the uh, port side of the ship with the um, bow and stern whited out to make the ship look shorter and, and more difficult to identify. Um, but you can see here on this top view and this other view that the blue is only on one side of the ship. So on the other side, it's just um, two shades of gray in the splinter pattern. So that's really interesting. Um, will be quite a challenging little um, paint scheme that but very very different quite unique so I'm quite tempted on that we can see the color shout outs and and basically those flags pinpoint all of those different colors we've got some forward facing pictures which is nice just to make you uh, see some of the detail better and then we've got the decal call outs and look how many we've got so we've got some for the stand, but look at all these. We've got decals on the guns. We've got, looks like we've got decals there for the zinc anodes. That's interesting. We'll have a look at the decal sheet in a minute. And we've got flags, more than one type of flag. Um, we've got the aerial recognition markers. Signal flags, that's nice. And if we flip it over, we have another scheme, which is um, Norway 43. Um, and again, we've got a, a, like a little two-tone scheme that's different on one half of the ship than the other, but a lot less blue this time. Um, however, um, it's still a really interesting scheme. So I, I think we've got some really nice paint schemes picked out here. They're going to be... Quite a challenge to paint, um, not so much on the hull, but doing that splinter pattern across all of that superstructure, it's going to be very time consuming. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, lots and lots of very careful masking, um, but should be fun. Uh, we, yeah, we've even got decals there for the hydrophone, so th there is a lot of decals on there. All sorts of bits that are missed by so many of the other manufacturers um, of 1350 scale kits. I really like the paint um, shout outs. I think Ravel have done a really nice job on that. Okay, so these are the instructions. I've had to dig through um, the box to get to the bottom of the box for the instructions. Um, and I can tell you now, we have an awful lot to go through so you might be wise to pause the video now go and make yourself a brew and a because this isn't going to be a quick first impressions video right so the instructions um which is the uh, nice color format that Ravel use is a stapled a4 and it's quite a meaty document at the bottom there i can see it says copyright 2018 well that is the re-released version i think originally the kit is 2007 um, and um, those of you that have been watching my channel for a little while know that my view is that the um, Ravel Bismarck is probably the best kit to go out and buy in 1350 scale um, in terms of a balance between accuracy um, and price um, so I'm expecting nothing less of this, but I haven't looked at it, so we'll be finding that out together. 
so we have the usual Ravel key um, and then we've got an explanation of the, uh, the, the key there in lots of different languages so it's very accessible. Um, some tips there in picture form which um, I noticed Airfix have been doing recently on their brand new um, entry level kits, beginners kits, so that's quite interesting. Then we've got uh, Ravel's um, paint shout outs. Invariably, they call for mixing paints. On the one hand, it's nice that they're trying to get an, an accurate color match. Uh, on the other hand, it's a bit of a pain in the bum having to do it. Um, but they do give you the percentages, 70, 30, 80, 20, 90, 10. So uh, it's not difficult to work out, but you are having to mix sometimes quite a volume of paint for us for a small item and that carries on through and then we have um, a list of parts so we've got sprues labeled a b we've got this the typical Ravel stand there it's the I mean, it's the same one that's used on the Queen Mary 2 we can see some blacked out areas there, so parts not used. So I would guess these are some of the some same sprues that are used on the Bismarck kit. Obviously, Turpitz is not an identical sister. There is some significant differences, plus she was up-armed a couple of times during her lifetime. Um, the most significant um, being this deck piece here is a, is a different shape. Um, to Bismarck's um, and yeah we can see the little lump there that is correct Bismarck doesn't have that on the on the front of the funnel for example so there are differences which I can already see have been correctly picked up and then we're straight into the build so what did we miss what was missing uh, well because um, this kit has been released post 2015 there is no history um, and for me, that's a real, a real loss. Um, if Ravel can't be bothered to do the history, what makes us feel like they've been bothered to do the research properly? Um, it, I, I think, I think we're losing something if we lose the history. It's just a plastic ship if you've not got the history. Anyway, that's my view. Um, so we start with putting the two hull halves together. Um, and we've got a little bit of bracing there, which is nice to see. And then we have this uh, quite unusual um, way of working where we've got these large holes here where the um, shaft lines are going to be built out from. Um, I'm guessing this is so they can get that area much more accurate, um, in which case, uh, brilliant. It also might present us with additional filling, um, so we won't know till we come to build it of course um, and then we're putting the rudders in which appear to have the um, sacrificial uh, zinc alloy um, anodes on which is nice to see they, they were quite prominent they were also on the um, brackets if you like there should be some on there and it looks like there isn't but um, easy enough to put on then, so we're building up all the propellers, that's the underneath of the hull done. Then we're mounting it on the um, stand and there appears to be a nice little uh, name plaque with shields. So that, that could look quite cool. And then we've got a single piece um, upper deck. So uh, unlike a lot of ships from that period, we've not got a, a stepped deck. It's a single flat deck. Um, so uh, a big piece of plastic to try and put in there uh, and get level uh, it will be interesting to see how they've done it but um, they appear to have location tabs which slot into the deck which is um, something they've used on other kits as well okay so we're on five steps there um, so far there isn't anything I wouldn't have done appear to be moving to sub-assemblies so we're building up the um, aircraft there um, showing you how to paint them up which is nice they've got the correct splinter pattern on um, yeah and the correct colored um, spinner tips yeah that all looks quite nice 
Uh, looks like we've got some decals as well. Um, and yeah, and we've got um, clear can uh, canopies, which is good. Then we're building up secondary armament, uh, primary armament, 15 inch guns. Then we've got um, crane base, ships, boats, um, the rest of the crane, including some railing and steps, and then more ships, boats, and the searchlights, which have clear lenses. Then we're building up the funnel. Um, we've got um, a single piece funnel cap, um, searchlight deck, um, yeah, and we've got the um, swing out cranes there, which are for handling the aircraft out of the um, hangars. We've got those little nacelles there that open and close for the for the larger searchlights. Sorry, I called that a searchlight platform, and it's actually got. Um, machine guns mounted on there, do beg your pardon. Um, yeah, as I can see though, they haven't depicted the um, the lift. So there's a there's like a little um, lift that goes against this side. It's the same on Bismarck. It's very, very rarely captured actually uh, on kits. I can't think of any kits at this scale, certainly that have them, but it is there. So there's some scratch building needed. Um, then we've got um, the upper deck being put together quite correctly, half steel, half wood. Um, the hangar, hangars, they look correct also. You appear to have an option for open and closed, which is interesting. And we can have the aircraft with the wing, wing swung back, so that's a lovely detail as well. Then more work building up the hangars, which includes the um, mounts for the ship's boats, just like Bismarck. Then we're putting together the uh, bulkheads, which is allows us to, to mount that on. So we're doing some building up of the deck before we put it on. I might not do it that way. Um, I prefer to build up on decks that have already been fitted. just find that easier, especially if they don't fit so well. Um, then we're building up forward superstructure um, and the and the bridges. Nice to see that the um, instructions are calling out different colours to paint as we go. Um, so that's good. So more of the um, forward bridge areas. We're adding the funnel here at this stage and the the two hangers that go either side. got the little um, deck area that goes at the base of the um, foremast there. More of the uh, command tower. You can see that going in. That's the Admiral's Bridge there. Um, then we've got the uh, radars with the little tower on top. Be interesting to see how good they are but they they do appear to have some form of mesh back so that's certainly better than Tamiya's uh, attempt I there's quite a lot of detail on here if what's what we can see on the instructions is what we're going to get on the plastic um, then they've done a really nice job of it oh that's nice so uh, we've got the two caps in there and they have correctly called out the two different colors so many uh, models have you painting that in the same colour as the superstructure, and it's wrong. The capstans uh, on Tirpitz and Bismarck and other German ships were painted with the um, red port uh, green starboard capstans, so that's nice to see. Uh, we're then adding the anchors. We've got the additional anchor retention chains, which is a nice little feature. Um, I'm guessing we've got moulded on anchor chains, but they actually look quite nice, don't they? Um, 
So, and that's the capstans that we've built up, 51, 52, um, winding gear, rope winding gear and so on. Then we've got these um, booms, which are for when she's in port, um, just to locate the propellers um, under the water. So these um, swing out and just mark those positions so that you uh, don't bump into them and cause any damage. Breakwater's going on, separate cable reels, thank you very much. Uh, pyro veins, um, spare gun barrel um, tubes. We've got more cable reels, um, torpedo tubes. Anti-aircraft guns look like they are poseable, so that's nice. Um, and we've got more of those those fittings there to to go on. Um, lots of cable reels, more um, spare uh, secondary gun tubes. Uh, so they put they put the spare barrels in these tubes on the deck, basically. Um, then we've got the search lamps going on and various bits of observation equipment. We've got the um, two observation huts which go on that observation deck there, which is um, nice to see that they're included, often missed out. Tammy has missed them out of both their Tirpitz and Bismarck. Um, then we've got the catapult and we've got the option of open and closed, which is really nice. It'd be nice if we had the option of having some of those open, some of those closed, because they are individual covers which you can lift off individually. So um, it might be interesting to see what we can do with that, or indeed what we've got in the etch. What is noticeable is there is no reference of any of the etch or the wood decks in this. So this is straight the instructions for the plastic kit. So we are going to have to uh, tie the two instructions together. Um, we'll have a look at those separately. Uh, then we've got all those secondary and um, light armament going on. Deck armament, we've got all sorts of railings, plastic railings, clearly we'll be replacing those and not using those. Um, range finders, got the uh, little swing out uh, wing um, decks there for uh, the pilot when he's bringing the ship in and out of dock. Lots of railings now at this point, uh, gangway ladders, um, some deck fittings going on here at the same time. Jack staff, more cable reels. It's a little bit higgledy piggledy how they've put it together. Um, and you've got paint instructions for some of the deck fittings at this point. Um, I, yeah, I would have done that right back when we fitted the deck. But anyway, um, I'd be interested to see what that looks like because there should be a lip on the back of the bow there, often missed, uh, and you have to end up putting it on um, yourself and, and scratch building something. So um, if it's built into that, that would be nice. It was captured on the recent Trumpeter 1200 Sharn horse, but they certainly missed it off on their 1200 Bismarck, so it's, it's often missed that little lip there. Um, we've got what looked like very nicely detailed um, davits there for those ship boats. Don't they look lovely? Let's hope the plastic parts look that good. Then we're building up the masts, which makes sense. Yard arms look a little heavy from the pictures. But again, I suspect Pontos replacements might be included. Um, then we're putting the ship's boats on with the cranes. Then we're putting some of the secondary armament on and more ship's boats and more railing, uh, anti-aircraft and secondary armament. 
primary armament and a rigging plan well a very basic rigging plan but a rigging plan nonetheless very nice so what's that 98 steps obviously we're going to more than double that when we add the photo etch so this is going to be an epic build when we come to it i'm that's wetting my appetite those instructions let's have a look at some plastic right decal sheet and first thing i'm going to say is that is what a ship's decal sheet should look like not one of these little strips that's got three flags on it and nothing else should look like this we've got flags we've got signal flags we've got bits for the stand yeah we've got um observation markers we've got stuff for the aircraft yep yeah, all good um all all stuff that i would say is a minimum they've added decals for the zinc anodes uh, i really really like that they've added decals for the um, hydrophone array which is nice if they found that they couldn't um, do it in plastic we've got depth markers so many manufacturers don't put depth markers on it's beyond me um, and we've got all sorts of um, little bits like shields that go on the guns and and that sort of thing so um, very nice we've got the we've got the um, listing markers that go uh, on the observation tub on the on the uh, main mast so if the the ship is listing that that basically swings um, you see it on a number of um, pre-war american ships so yeah quite a quite an interesting little device we've got two different types one in red one in white um, I, so that's a nice busy decal sheet they've also put the boot stripe on I'm not sure i'm going to use decals for the boot stripe but i could see that some people would and then we've got decals for some but not all of the um, splinter pattern across the hull for one of the paint schemes so uh, this is the one that has less of the blue um, and you still have to paint the blue on but they've done the dark gray decals for you now i do know that there is an aftermarket company that does the full decal um, splinter pattern for the whole of the ship um, and it, it costs a pretty penny but it's a it's a huge sheet um, and if decals is is your thing then that might be the way to go i think possibly using these for templates for paint masks might be a better way forward but kudos to uh, Ravel for trying and for considering and for trying to put as much color into a battleship as they can i think that's a great little decal sheet well done The one thing that is clearly missing, however, is the swastikas. Um, they've not even given you the ability to make those up. Ravel being a German company makes absolute sense. So you would have to paint those in or, or come to some way of doing that yourself. Right, time to look at some plastic. Um, and this is these two hull halves are marked up as Ravel 2007. Um, so I was right with my trying to remember when it came out guess um, and what we have is a, a combination of traditional Ravel approach and some very nice detail so um, a traditional Ravel approach we've got this on the inside uh, of the hull here we have these two little marks here which you can drill out and they then correspond with the uh, plastic base and I actually used mechanical fasteners to hold the base on so you're not having to glue um, and we can see here where the um, internal supports will go there are some um, pins there to help you line it up and we can see it's quite a decent piece of plastic so I'm actually going to just have a go now and see if we can get these two halves together there is quite a bit of heavy seam bit of flash there that we'll need cleaning off so we're not going to get these um, perfectly closed together but what I'm interested in is the underside of the, 
the hull. That's lovely and level that, so we're not going to have any issues there. So as we look at the hull, you can see we've got the um, keel strips on the bottom of the hull, so that's really nice. That they I've never seen them on um, a Bismarck or Tirpitz kit before. It's the first time I've ever seen them, and I've seen a few kits, um, and that runs the full length up there. So that's very nice. We've got these openings for the area where we're going to build up the, the propellers and I guess that was to avoid, add better detail and avoid some sink, although we do have a little bit of sink there, tiny amount. Um, there is some um, mould seam to uh, remove, but the bilge keel is nicely done and above that we've got all the sea chests. Again, um, if you're buying the, the um, Tamiya one you'd be missing all of that. Um, there's no hydrophone location, but that's because we've got a decal for it. And there is no marking point for the um, pyrovane um, attachment rod, which extends from the, the bulge in the bow there. Interestingly, the bulge in the bow was actually first done on an ocean, German ocean liner. Um, and it was so efficient that it was very quickly put onto German naval ships. Um, we've got, in terms of hull detail, we can just about see um, a boot line, which, so if that's your water line, there's a lot of hull underwater there. The um, scuttles on the front, not too bad actually, just trying to look at them now. Sorry, I keep knocking my light because I forget how long this hull is. There's a little bit of distortion on these. Um, they're slightly elongated. The top row is slightly elongated. You can see that. It, it's very slight. I guess most modelers would probably not worry about it. I, I'm in two minds at this stage whether I would be or, or not it would probably get the better of me, I think. Uh, and then on the stern, which is usually quite busy, we've got the hang runs on in plastic, which is nice. They'll be perfectly adequate under a wash. And then we've got the mounting point for um, the propeller marker booms. And there would be a boom that comes out for the ship's boat to dock. Um, yeah, that's that's a nicely detailed hull. We've not got any panel lines or anything like that but it's you almost never get that and when they do do it it's not really right so um, as ships hulls go I'm very very happy with that actually right let's get to the main deck then and the first thing I've spotted pleases me no end because actually I've never seen anyone um, mold it in place and in fact Trumpeter missed it off their 1200 Bismarck um, which really annoyed me uh, and that's these two little retaining horseshoes for the anchor chain so obviously we've got open horse pipes on German and capital ships so the anchor chain goes along the the, the deck uh, and then the anchor draws up to this point um, and every manufacturer tends to miss these little horseshoes which hold the chain deck in place and if they weren't there then every time she hit a big wave, the anchor would be jumping all over the place, cause a lot of damage to the ship. Um, so I, that's why they're designed in there, and I've never seen them moulded on before. You always have to add them scratch build. Um, I'm not 100% sure that they're right. They might need a little bit of modification, but 10 out of 10 for effort on that, Ravel. That is rather nice, actually. So we have a, a recessed deck which is really nice to see. Um, it's sharp and clean, it's oversized, but then uh, a plastic deck marked out is always gonna be oversized. Um, that's certainly as good as anything you'd see from the likes of uh, Trumpeter or Fujimi or the like. Um, we've got 
the bonnets there look nicely detailed and correct for the uh, anchor chain to disappear uh, back into the deck and the mounting points for the capstans. Um, these are a little bit thick, we might want to remove those and put um, brass rod in. Uh, we've got the vents which are lacking in a little bit of detail. Again, I suspect we might have some extra detail. There should be, um, uh, these should open up a little bit on the top so there's little hatches and things to put on. These rectangles are actually openings, f um, they're hatches um, and there's uh, ladders going down from the deck there. So we should have um, some detail on those which there isn't again I suspect we might have in the photo etch set uh, and then we've got some skylights now at the base of the barbette we've got some little lumps and I suspect their location points there's quite a lot of ventilator trunking that goes up around the front of this um, quite complex with little walkways different heights it's quite an intricate part of the the ship quite eye-catching uh, we can see we've got location points for the um, breakwaters um, and then we can see where the uh, main upper superstructure secondary deck starts from. Um, seems to mount onto these points so that should be all nice and square. We've got some plastic moulded in ladders which take you down to the walkway underneath um, the catapult, uh, effectively the catapults in that area. So. That's all good. We've got some moulded on boat chocks which are a little thick but not too bad actually. Not too bad and once you've got a ship's boat on there won't be greatly seen. Again I suspect we'll have photo etch replacements. And then as we come to the stern it's much of the same. We've got a nice level of detail on there but it could be uplifted. Got a number of um, skylights there, and yeah, we've got the um, the anchor chain for the stern anchor as well. So yeah, that is a nice little deck, and if you didn't want to use the wood deck, then I think the plastic deck um, is going to look good enough under paint. Right, better have a look at all this lot then. Right, let's start with the um, clear sprue. We've got two of these um, in their own little bag, which was taped down nicely wrapped tight, so they weren't loose in the bag at all. Uh, and what we've got is, we've got clear windows, which I think are for ship's boats. Absolutely for ship's boats. Uh, we've got, uh, a cockpit canopy for uh, an aircraft and then we've got four um, searchlight lenses and we've got two of those so we must have two aircraft um, that's really nice I have not seen clear parts for ships boats before um, I can't think of any other manufacturer that does that that's a really nice touch now I was all prepared to go but they do look a bit thick and you might want to Actually, they don't. They don't look a bit thick, and you mask that off and paint them up. They're gonna look very, very good indeed. Very realistic. The same with the um, uh, aircraft canopy. I think, unfortunately, there's a there's a gate that goes right on to the join. So how clear that's gonna be when we clean it up, I don't know. But I still prefer that as a solution to doing the whole thing clear. Um, I often say about the trumpeter, just do the, the canopy bit clear. So, Ravel, I really like what you've done here. Now, we might want to replace those with etch. There's some beautiful detail that the cross members that go across um, the shutters um, is really nicely done. You can't really see it, but I can feel it. That is really nice. Really, really nice. 
So let me show you how these bagged up. Um, we have some bags that have got three or four sprues in them and some that are individual. So I guess they've assessed which ones are at higher risk. And what they've done is they've put them in bags which are too large, deliberately easier to put the, the sprue in, and then they're folded over and taped down. So they are very well wrapped. So really happy with the packaging of the individual ones at least. Something in there that's um, a dead and flat bug. Anyway, we'll move that out of the way just in case it's something I can catch. Um, so on this sprue we have the um, torpedo tubes, some of the mountings for the ship's boats, um, swing out framework for the um, deck wing, for the uh, yeah for the deck wings for the pilot, um, the winding gear for the uh, forecastle. We've got one of the rudders, and then we've got plastic railings, and all of them have got one thing in common: plenty of flash. There is quite a lot of flash on all of those parts. Surprising amount of cleanup, actually. Having said that, the railings, once cleaned up, yes, they'll be oversized, but if you don't like photo etch, um, they won't look too bad. Uh, it'll look better than not having railings on, I think is what I'm trying to say. Um, but they will look over, oversized and... Uh, and will look chunky and will spoil the effect of the of the model. Um, so if we put that to one side, because we know we're going to replace those with photo etch, um, the rest of the parts, um, ignoring the, the flash and heavy seams, crisply moulded, um, relatively nice level of detail. The um, torpedo tubes are hollowed out, they're not solid, so they'll look really nice under paint. And we've got some detail on the little range finder there, which um, a lot of people wouldn't have bothered with. So I'm happy with that. We do have the raised um, anodes on there. So even though we've got decals, we, we've got options. We could sand them off and put decals on um, and that would look good. Or we can paint them and not put the decals on and that would look good. The one thing we're not going to do is leave the kit part like that and then put the decal on because it won't fit on those lumps and look wrong. So we've got options. Um, I, yeah, I like that. Right, so we now have this um, upper deck. Um, and I'm really pleased to see that they've got this quite accurate. So if we, if we start at the um, stern area of the, of the deck here, we've got, we've got some plastic ladders hanging off. So you know I'm not going to like those. You know we're going to replace those when we come to build this. Um, but yeah, they look um, they look all right as plastic ladders go. I've seen worse, um, but as plastic ladders go, don't like them. Um, we've got um, nicely reliefed um, deck, which all looks good. We've got um, some little um, storage boxes on there, which obviously uh, a slightly angle to allow them to come out of the tool. So uh, not, not brilliant, but there's no detail on the sides, so you could square them off okay. Um, and then you've got um, the splinter shields there, which have got no support brackets on them, but actually are quite thin. I've seen better, uh, but I've definitely seen worse. Um, so that's quite nice in its, in its own right. Then you get it, it, it comes up to the catapult and we've got these two little step downs and they're actually correct. Um, and you've got some nice detail there, a little bit of flash but nothing major. And then the same with the steel deck, um, it slopes up to the um, catapult uh, and it doesn't slope up the full width of the deck and that's absolutely correct so that's nice. We've got a totally smooth area there of steel deck and then you've got a very finely um, diamond tread pattern. 
much finer than uh, I've seen on Fujimi, for example, or New Tamiya. Um, that is some of the nicest textured steel deck I have seen. Yeah, it's better than Trumpeter as well. That is really nice. Uh, yeah, actually, that is very nice. Um, and then we go forward and correctly go back to a wooden deck. Um, and again, splinter shield that's, that's good, could be better, could be thinned out a little bit, but um, it's definitely good enough. I really like that. 